comes into it. <laughs> Um, I went for a few interviews and I got the ones that I had interviewed for and because I hadn't heard, I had, you know how everyone has a preference for which hospital they'd like to work in, I didn't want to say no because I definitely wanted to work in hospital just in case I didn't get the one that I wanted. So you do have leeway before you start work but it's in your best interests as soon as you know where you want to go, tell them straight away so that they're not left without an intern for that year because you do need interns to do to do work there. So, um, yeah, you just have to let them know as soon as you can. You sort of say, yes, yes, I'll take the job, but you still have to, you still can accept another job if you get it. Um, but they, can't, they can't make you do anything until you sign a piece of paper. They can't, but it's pretty, the country um, hospitals get pretty nasty about that. It's yeah. pretty bad form because they interview first and they're desperate to fill their positions. And then by the time you've found out and rejected the next three people on the list have already got their jobs as well. So now they're going to the tenth person on their list where they could have easily offered that to second or third person on their list. So they, they're not very happy about it. So no we need to be very... <laughs> we need to be really open and really honest. And, uh, you know, yeah. hospital funds are really small. Well, if you screw someone over, they'll remember. So, so you know, you... Yeah, and I mean, hopefully you'll get your offers within, you know, a period of a week. And to be honest, just say, look, I've interviewed at three other places. I'm still waiting to be back. Can I give you an answer by, you know, and if you say, um, I will let you know by, you know, this Friday, or, you know, give them a five-day window, you know. But, you know, that's your gamble as well, kind of thing, because they might bring you back, you know, if you've passed that deadline you've set with them, might say, well, sorry, we're going to talk to someone else since you can't commit. So, you know, if you're honest and say, this is what I'm waiting for, um, you know, this is what I'm waiting on, can I give you an answer in five days? I don't think anyone would think that, you know, that is unreasonable. But if you're saying, you know, just open-ended, oh, I'm waiting on these offers, um, no, I can't accept, you know, I'd like it, but I'm waiting. They're not going to, they're not going to work with you. And, you know, as Sarah said, you, you know, rejecting the offer after you've already accepted, you know, a month later, it's yes. really bad form. Do it ASAP, so, um, if you need to. Don't apply for a job that you're not to take. Take, yeah. So don't apply for a job in Broken Hill for the interview experience if you're not prepared to move to Broken Hill to work there. You know, it's, it's just a Stopping being right. sensible. I think that's a really important thing. It's one of the most emotional things from the directors of pharmacy in the emails after the interviews is people do, as they say, screw them up. If people are honest, I think everyone accepts that and respects people for that. But people get very upset if they're left without interns. A, lot of, a number of the big hospitals have been left without interns because it's happened that people have gone somewhere else and their second choice has then done the same thing to them and it's left a really, really bad taste. So, um, again, I think it's really important, as you said, not to apply for a job if you really don't want it at all. Um, but then we understand this, the situation that you're in and you will have um, a number of sort of results pending. So, if you are up fast and honest, we, we have to accept that. Mm. That works okay. The other issue is, too is hospitals are big public service you know, institutions and sometimes we're hamstrung because on that panel, before we can get that position accepted, everyone has to push buttons and you know, sign forms and sometimes we're running around before we can offer you the job to get all those forms signed. So sometimes if you do bring the convener of the panel, they may not be able to offer you the job, but they, you may say, look, you know, is it worth me waiting another three or four days? And they, they might say, yes, I'm pretty relaxed if you did that. They would not be able to say, look, you know, you've got the job, because they're waiting for the other panel members to, um, to sign off. And then we have to wait for the HR department to say, yes, you can go ahead. So unfortunately, in the good old days, we just used to say, yes, you've got the job. But these days, there, there are some things. But if you're honest with us, we can be... Yeah, and I think what Peter says you. is really true, that, you know, if you're waiting for a few things, you've got, you should ask people about how long they think it will take for them to make a decision. Um, and if they say a week, or, and you haven't heard after a week, well then I think it's reasonable for you to ring and call um, to find out whether they're still making a decision or whether they're not being included and they just haven't told you or, or whatever the situation is. If they've told you that they should make a decision in a week, then it's reasonable for you to find out after a week where they're up to. Um, are there any questions from our video conference sites that I'd like to ask?
Yeah, I think if there's any questions. <laughs> uh, I just add as well, like, I know I got some kind of dodgy advice from family, like, I got offered the intern job at the Children's Hospital and I um, was told, you know, get a contract and, um, you know, I was waiting for my contract and I got offered another interview, um, actually prior to getting the job and I was going to go to that interview and um, my dad's like, yeah, go to the interview, go to the interview, you know, you haven't got your contract yet, there's no guarantees in life, you know, he's a CEO and employs people all the time, so he's like, no, you know, it's not guaranteed. And then I was with Andrew McLaughlin here on placement, he's like, you've gone into an interview, you've already accepted a job, that's, you know, that's not done. And I was like, oh, but I haven't got the contract yet, how do I know? He goes, if you've received a firm verbal offer of employment, you have a job, don't go to that, you know, interview. You're wasting their time and you're wasting your time. And that was the best advice I ever got, and I cancelled the interview and didn't go, and you know, my contract came a couple of you know, weeks later, but that's from South Wales Health. It <laughs> takes a little time. So, you know, just um, get advice from farmers, it's not from people that don't know what to do. Long waiting is for everything. Do South Wales Health. Any questions? Orange? Are you there? Can you wait? Hello, yes. Uh, just one question. Um, is it possible to split placements, like doing six months in hospital and six months in the community? I believe there's only a, a couple of those sort of positions around the state in some of the country areas, but there's been a lot of talk that that would be a better model in some areas. But I already know of um, a couple of uh, formalised uh, internships like that. I think one's down in Gold Coast. Yeah, and Wagga. Yeah, I thought they were the same in May, but Calvary used to Gold was the one that I knew of. ACT. Oh, yeah, no, same So there, there may be four or five, but certainly not a common practice, but um, it certainly uh, it would be a good experience if you get one of those. Uh, probably another piece of advice just on the community front. <coughs> I think it's important that you let people know when you're accepting a job in hospital that you have a community job or perhaps even to discuss it at the interview. We're very happy for our um, interns not to work on Saturdays if they have a community commitment <coughs> on Saturday because we understand that they really need to be working in the community to be able to help them to, you know, to know what happens there and to be able to pass their exam. So I think most people are fairly flexible about that. So don't, wor I, you know, don't worry about um, maintaining your job in the community. I think it's generally in a paediatric hospital like mine, I tell my interns that they need to do some, some work in the community because they're not exposed to all the drugs that the, the normal population is. And I tell them at the interview, it could be harder to get your registration because you're not going to see, see the same number of drugs in this hospital that you will in uh, either community or in our hospital. Any last questions? Yeah. yeah. Is there a rough time frame for your hospitals? are going to put the, all the ads for all the public hospitals on the web, you know, a general ad on the New South Wales Health website with the aim of having a, um, a common closing date. Um, we, Peter and I are both try and interview as soon as we can. It's been our philosophy and generally the two of us interview quite quickly, more so than other hospitals. Um, but really it's just a matter of looking at the notice board and seeing when that's come up. <coughs> usually there's about a two, usually there's a two week period um, for applications to be received and generally we will try and call those hundred applicants within a week of receiving um, so you hopefully have some interviews set up for We don't have a date yet but we will let uh, we will let, let Beck know when that we have a date and the um, same with the other pharmacy school we try to pass on when to look for the, uh, for the online jobs. Unfortunately we're well out of time, we're meant to be out of here before now, um, but thanks for coming and could you all just join with me in thanking all of our presenters today.